Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Friday night. We're live. Uh, and I'm just going to make sure all the streams are working. So I'm doing that thing where I don't have a producer. So I just do it myself. So just bear with me a moment so we uh, can make sure it's all working and um, I don't get a feedback loop. Ah, Samuel Licardi joined us, it says. That's good news. Sam, welcome to the stream. Hello, how are you? Good, good, good. Happy Fridays to you. Yes, happy Friday. Happy World Martini Day as well. Happy World Martini Day. Yes, indeed. Um, he- welcome, everyone. My name is Matt Bailey. I'm the National Ambassador for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, and I'm joined tonight from a, um, I'm going to say, repeat guest. Uh, Sam's been on before, but we've never done something this uh, this ridiculous before. No. Two, two non-bartenders trying to make cocktails. That's right. Two two ambassadors, uh, spirit ambassadors, I can say, um, and trying to make cocktails. And neither of us have a bartending background of note to um, to to merit even um, getting away with this. Yes. <laughs> for those who don't know, Sam is uh, is the brand ambassador. I'm going to say for Victoria, but it, it could be uh, Victoria mainland, mainly Victoria. Yeah, mainland. Sorry, mainland uh, ambassador for McHenry's Distillery in Tasmania. Uh, he'll can tell you a bit more about that distillery as we go along. But the whole idea of tonight. Is that we get to um we get to have a bit of fun with all the stuff that's in front of us yeah uh, for Friday night and um and take your questions take your comments I can see lots of people tuning in which is great thank you so much for coming along for the ride tonight um we've been going live every single day for now for uh every single night for about fourteen months which has been a lot of fun and a bit of a journey and um on the end of the nights I don't go live is when I'm already hosting elsewhere of course and or or Andrew's doing it or whatever. I'm still trying to get Susie to do a stream. And Susie, I know you watch these, so I'll get you on one time. Don't worry about that. Um, but in the meantime, uh, and if uh, and if, if for everyone who, who knows Susie, she's the most miraculous oracle of the society. And um, But I will get her on the live stream one day. Miranda Marie says, the boys. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's going to be a bit of a, it's going to be, if we can make these, I'm going to be really impressed. I reckon we can. I think it's you know what? Be- the proof is in the pudding, so let's get to it before the ice melts. Exactly. So let's, <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know what? I'm going to let you start us off with this. Start us off with where we're going to start. So, I'll, let, let me, okay, I'm going to just explain what to, to those watching what we've kind of got in front of us and what we're trying to do. Yes. we have got, well, in my case, I've got some weird gins. I've got some normal gin. I've got some car strength gin. Uh, no, I actually don't have any normal gin. But anyway, I've got some bitters. I've got some grenadine. I've got some sugar syrup. I've got ice. I've got... Campari, I've got vermouth, I've got more vermouth, I've got lemon. You've got about the same stuff going on here. I've got some Australian vermouth, some aperitifs, some Lillet, some Metallicus, uh, car strength gin, Tassie gin, garnishes, lots of ice and lots of random bar equipment that I don't know how to use that well. We've got knives, we've got boards, we've got garnishes, we've got everything in front of us ready to go. Um, (laughs) Miranda says, ha, 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 yes, good to see you, Miranda. Mike Moruzzi, good to see you, Mike, hope you're well. Rob Akers, Hayden Dare, Caleb Chan, Darren Howie, Nick Husek, everyone tuning in, thank you so much for being a part of tonight's Friday night mashup with uh, Ambassador from McHenry's. You know what? Sam and I are going to make a mess of this, and we're going to see if we can really screw this up. So the idea behind it is that he and I make at least two, maybe three cocktails. We'll see how we're going, yes. So we're going, and yes, maybe three, where we're going to... um, and we're going to show you how we make them. And then you can do the same at home because today is World Martini Day. Uh, I found out it was World Martini Day about six minutes ago. So that's really exciting for me, um, knowing that now. So I can actually make more context of this. And yeah. uh, we're going to have a bit of fun with it. Where do we start? Well, I reckon we make a gimlet first. We start something a bit refreshing, move to the maybe a Negroni, and then finish with a martini a night after dinner drink, something like that. So you get, use a shaker that. for a gimlet? You don't need to, do you? Oh, yeah, I would just because it's got that nice. Okay. Just nice and cold, something like that. So, I need ice. Yes, ice. Yeah, okay, let's start so, with some ice. Okay. I'll shake yeah. and fill with ice, and it's a lovely little uh, three, re- three ingredient drink. So, it's not going to be too strenuous. Very easy. Okay. So, yeah, let's fill shake it with ice. Okay. Yeah, then what we're going to do is we're going to put 60 mil of gin in. Oh, now, which gin are you going to use? I'm going to use our federation, and then I'm going to use the GN.3 and the Negroni because I think. I'll talk about that when we get there. But how, like- about I, how about I do it around the other way then? I'll use the GN3.6 in this yeah. one. Let's do that. Uh, for those playing along at home, I'm actually using Scottish gin, smoking jacket gin from the Society. It's a GN3.6 from Hoik, which I, I've been told you really need to throw your throat into saying where it's from. 
can smell that from here. Actually, I don't know if it's yours. I can smell or mine, but I know we're in different states, but it's they're pretty powerful stuff. So I'm going to go with I know. Uh, 60 mils of that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so 60 mils, so two shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm going with the Federation just because it's got that lemon myrtle, that cinnamon myrtle, kakadu plum, and it's going to get that nice zestiness coming through. Yep. And then what we're going to add is 30 mil of lime juice. The original recipe calls for lime cordial, but then when you add in, I think, sugar syrup as well, I don't like that. So some bartenders will probably disagree with me and say it's like a lime daiquiri, but I like fresh lime juice in there. Okay, so what's next? So lime juice. So we'll chuck 30 mil in. 30 mil of lime juice. Okay. So I'm being lazy and I don't have lime juice. Nothing wrong uh, with that at all. Look, uh, what I've got, I've got a, um, I've got some lemon juice, which I did not squeeze. That's all right. I think, especially like after being quarantined, we're not going to have that stuff at home all the time. Yeah, look, this is exactly, this is the kind of stuff you can make. We, yes. You don't need, like, just, this is quarantine cocktails. Exactly. So one of those, and then what else? And then 22.5 mil of sugar syrup, or 20 mil. I normally just free ball it, so. I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the jigger. Yes. So yeah, just sort of like three quarters. 20-ish, like yeah, yeah. Put that in. And then that's it. That's nice and simple. We give we'll it shake it together. Yeah, we'll get our glassware ready. Okay. So I've had mine chilling, so I'll get my ice cube out of there. And now I've just got a nice coupe. And then yeah, we'll give it a shake. All right, let's let's see if we can get this done right. Lovely. Not too, not too much of a shake. And then, yeah, just get your strainer and strain it in. Uh, also referred to as a Hawthorne strainer for those playing at home. I do, I've, got, I've got some brand new ones in this week, so I'm going to give these a, a crack for the first time. Do you put any ice in your glass? No, for this one, just into your, mart- into your coupe or whatever glass. Just I don't have a martini or a coupe, so I'm going to just use this tumbler. Sorry, guys. No stress. And then we're going to pour that in. i got some new barley this week. So this is a, an X-Wing from Salals because I wanted to. So it's, it's yeah. one of the and purchases. That seems like a, a <laughs> something ridiculous. Good, well done. I also have a Millennium Falcon one because I could. It was on sale. <laughs> Miranda says headphone warning next time for our shakes at the microphones. <laughs> yeah, no, very sorry about that, Miranda. Now, I'm actually not, not not to not to go too gourmet on you. Although I'm using the wrong glassware, these limes that I've got here, I picked out of my garden just an hour ago. That's so what want. Nice and fresh from your garden. I'm going to use garden fresh limes. Yeah, and I'm going to use that as the uh, as the as the uh, the garnish. I'm just going to put a little dehydrated lime wheel in there. That's what I've got lying around at home. Let's have a taste, shall we? And then yeah, that's our little our little gimlet. So cheers, Slancha. Nice, super refreshing. Oh. Wow. Yeah, it's they're dangerous to drink because you don't realize how much gin's in there. Like you're using quite a lot of gin. And I used a 50, uh, mine's fifty percent as well. Yeah. So I made, I made, yeah, I tried that last night and it was just lovely. So this is one of my favorites I've found. Mm. And super simple. Whilst we're getting to, well, whilst we're enjoying that gin, I'm going to have a look at some of the comments coming in. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Nick Husick says, the other day I found out that I own some McHenry gin as they make the librarian and parliamentarian gin for Parliament House. Yes, that's a good little segue. So this is a pretty rare label. This is our Federation gin, but this is Parliament's edition. Mm, so right. We've basically got the spirits contract for the Parliament House, so the building itself in Canberra. And what we do is we do the Federation gin, which is commissioned for them by us. And what it is is one botanical from every state and territory. So a really Australian, quite a unique gin. And then, yeah, the Parliamentar- uh, the Librarian's gin is our classic, just with a different label on it. And we have our Courtyard, which is our Saffron gin, which is just the yellow one over there. So we also do a honey vodka for them. So that's something, that's where my politics degree, I think, goes to. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I keep forgetting you you worked in politics. Well, I didn't work, luckily. I just studied it. And studied it, yeah. That's why I work in the alcohol industry now because you sort of, after that time, you, you just want to drink. Yes, yes. Yeah. I Actually, we wanted to host the um, the Australian Malt Whiskey Tasting Championships. One year, we were looking at doing them at um, uh, Parliament House on Macquarie Street here Ooh. in Sydney. And no, uh, cool. they've got a great room overlooking the, the gardens and it's it's a fantastic, fantastic spot. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and we were all set to go, but then they said, oh, you can't... They said, oh, you can have the room and everything's good and the catering's good, but you can't serve neat spirits here. And I said, oh, what does that mean? They said, oh, you can't serve them neat. They have to be mixed with something. I said, well, that won't, won't really work for a whiskey championship. <laughs> uh, and uh, their, 
but could, could you could you just waive that rule for for this championship? And they said uh, they had to turn down. That's right. They had to turn down uh, Tony Abbott from having a, a whiskey neat there once. So they're, they're going to have to turn us down too. And I said, yeah. oh, that's fair enough, I guess. Yeah, fair enough then. Yeah. Um. Um. Sam, do you have any tips for using McHenry slow? Great straight up, but always happy to try new things. Yeah, personal recommendation on its own, but slow and soda for a nice little summery drink. Mm. Tonic because the tonic will overpower the slow gin. So put a bit of soda in there, a little bit of lime as your garnish. Yep. Really nice one is mix it with sparkling wine. So make like a, a slow royale. So it's a bit of a Kia Royale spin-off. Instead of using cassis, you use the slow gin. Over ice cream works really well. Uh, slow gin fizz, a Charlie Chaplin. Mix it with amaretto. So you do, I think, 50 ml of slow gin or any berry gin. Put a little bit of amaretto in there and then a little bit of lime, uh, lemon juice. Just nice wintry drink and play around with it. That's where I sort of make up most of my slow gin recipes. There was a comment from, um, actually, from Mike Moritzi who asks, uh, he was talking at the time and he missed the ingredients. Mike, it's two uh, measures of gin, so 60 ml of gin, one measure of lemon or lime juice, Lime juice is probably preferable. I used lemon. Um, so, and one measure of, of, of lime juice and then 22-ish mils of sugar syrup. And that's really simple. Shake it all up with ice in a shaker uh, and you're sorted. Super refreshing drink. Great for winter and summer. Yeah. Yeah, if you want to make it a bit more wintry, use a nice oily gin, something that's going to get a bit more body to it. But it's really, it's a simple drink. It's, it's super easy. Well... That's a really nice cocktail and one to really love, lovely one to start with. Um, and a big hello from uh, Alex Dahlenberg, who's working right now at Nick and Nora's in Parramatta. That's it. I think that opens in 13 days in Melbourne. So I'm very excited to get to yeah. get in. I think Alex will be looking after something to do with the opening of that, no doubt, with her promotion, which we've spruiked out on this channel before. But congratulations again, Alex. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Julie Otter, good to see you, David Taylor. David and or Caroline Taylor, good to see you both. Um, Good, good, good. Okay, well, yeah, that's a lovely, that's a lovely drink to start with. It's, it's super refreshing. I really like them, even over. I see what you mean by dangerous. I see what you mean by dangerous. You know, it's like the kind of cocktail you could um, yeah, you, very easily um, drink uh, quite a bit of. And we've used quite boozy gins, like with navy strength gin, barrel aged gins. Yeah, it's brilliant. That's where I think it shines its best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I always prefer, I always prefer navy strength gin wherever possible. But I'm yeah. a car strength whiskey nerd. Exactly. So, you know, I, I get it. I get it. I, I feel that, yes. I'm just going to check the other channels for any comments coming in, of course. Um, oh, there's some people watching over here as well. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, Darren Howie, good to see you, mate. Matt Willis says, so whatever you could, whatever you can find in yours and the neighbor's cupboard, pretty much. Um, yeah, that's sort of what I've done over quarantine is make things that I've had lying around the house and sort of showcase what we can do. And I think that's, that's the best thing about cocktails at home. You just make what you want to make. So uh, Darren Howie asks, uh, Sam, where do we get that X-Wing? Um, it was from Mover and Shaker. So they're American barware thing. So yeah, head online. So they've got an X-Wing. They've just got all like a Darth Vader helmet one, a Stormtrooper. They've got heaps of that. And I had to restrain myself from getting too many because yeah, yeah. I'm not going to use that many Hawthorne strainers. No. <laughs> yeah. How many Hawthorne strainers could you possibly need in your life? I've got three now. And I'm like, well, I really need one. <laughs> So, well, I've got one and I use one. So, yeah. Yeah. I know. So, it's although this one is very nice, and I want to do a big shout out to Uber Bartles because um, they very ge generously uh, gifted this to me when I won the Ambassador of the Year, uh, Scotch Whiskey Ambassador of the Year. It was a nice little gift on the side of the of, of being sponsored by Uber Bartles. That was great. Um, so, let me uh, let's uh, shall we shall we tr shall we try our second cocktail? I think so. Yeah, I reckon we can. Okay, make okay, make here we are. Let's go. Let's go round two. Let's go right, round two. Go to the Negroni, a classic. Just a, uh, just a classic cocktail. Yeah. Okay, Negroni it is. Yes. So I'm just going to make this in the glass because I'm going to save my Mastera. Am I um? Yeah, ready, ready, ready to go. go. Martini. What are we? What are we starting with? So just I've got a big, big chunk of ice. I've got a nice little sphere in my glass. And then we, yeah, just build this in the glass. It's super easy. It's thirty. A sphere of ice, have you? Yeah, I do. You're that organised. I am. I've, I've had a great little time online shopping for bar equipment during this. So, oh, I could have made a sphere, but I, I didn't realise we we're going to be going that that hardcore. It doesn't matter at all. That's what. I okay, mean. here we go. So, yeah, so this is going to be easy. 30, 30, 30. So now, one of my favourite ways I've ever exactly. This is an easy one to make, but one of my, my one of my favourite 
one of the favorite ways I've ever seen a Negroni being made was a batched Coroni. Coroni. Back, batched Negroni, which was, um, there was a competition between Will Edwards and Harriet Lee from Archie Rose. And they wanted to see which of each of them, I think it was a promo they were doing for Dan Murphy's or something, but which, uh, between the two, uh, which one of them could make the quickest batched Negroni. That's cool. I and like and uh, Harriet mistakenly picked up one bottle at a time and started pouring them into this bucket. Mm. Will had his bucket and he just grabbed all three bottles That's upside crazy. down and poured 700 mils of each into the jug, stir it around, batch. And you're done. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose you can, there were variations on this. So you could really use Campari, Aperol, which then becomes a Contessa. And then you can make a white Negroni with Italicus. And we were talking about this before. It's awesome. Yeah. It's such a cool White Negroni is great. I, it's uh, just by the way, Matt Wooler is saying I'm making an aviation gin martini right now. Aviation is really nice. And Ryan aviation Reynolds, is a banger. Great stuff. Yes. And Ryan Reynolds adds for aviation. Uh, unreal. It's just <laughs> gin martini. Yeah, no, he's, he, he's a master of marketing, isn't he? He's great. Yeah. So yeah, I'm so, using the Metagin goes down. It's okay, a- you know what? Okay, you know what? I was I was gonna sw- I was gonna switch it up. I won't use Metagin for this one. I'm gonna use that weird uh, Oak Gin. See how that works, if it works at all. Now I'm the biggest fan of Campari, so I'm actually gonna use Aperol in because that's my sort of favorite, and I suppose that shows what you can do with different things, and we'll make two different versions, and then okay, we can chat about that. You're making two versions. Oh, I can, but we're gonna make what two different ones each. Okay, so 30 of that, 30 uh, Campari. Build in glass, huh? Yeah, it saves a bit of time and it saves my uh, my nice barware for the martini. And then, yeah, just a nice maiden eye vermouth tonight for me. It's what I had in the fridge. Yep, yep. Speaking of which, I had vermouth negre, which is one of my all-time favourite vermouths. It's just, it's so, it's so rich and uh, syrupy, this one. It's one of my all-time favourites. The moods are, there's so many, like I've, that's what I've learned recently. There's just so much to it. And yeah, it's a, it's a massive category. Like uh, I love it. Like you can use um, the lay in there as well, maybe. You know what? That's got to be one of the simplest cocktails on earth, really. It is. It's incredibly simple, super delicious and incredibly boozy. Oh no, I love them. Oh. Yeah. You know what? That actually works with that oak gin. It gives it sort of a... Yeah. That actually does work quite well. Just a little what? bit of uh, orange peel in there. Mm. And done. You know what? You said before you're not a big fan of garnishes in terms of in the drink sometimes, right? I, I, I think my main issue with garnishes is I like to drink sh- drinks quite quickly, but I understand the aesthetics and how. No, no, of course, yeah. Uh, uh, you put. Uh, I put a garnish. I was very keen to put a lime garnish in that. Um, yes. The gimlet, right? Whereas. Uh, I, I don't want a garnish near my Negroni. Yeah. And even like, even if it's being made somewhere, it's like, oh, don't worry about that orange peel. Don't worry about that or anything. I just, li- I just like it as it is with Negronis. I just like it nice and clean, neat, doesn't need it much added to it. Yeah, that is an awesome little gin to make a Negroni with. I think because it's got those nice aniseed characteristics. Like I, I, I had a great time trying this yesterday. What's the proof on that one? I think it's 50, 50.3. So it's quite a boozy gin. Yeah. But to me, it didn't even, it, it wasn't really, I didn't really think it was a barrel-aged gin at first. Like it was super pleasant. It wasn't overly citrusy, but you had the, yeah, it was this really nuanced aniseed, super creamy, made a good gin and tonic as well, made a good gimlet. Yeah, it was, it's awesome. Thing is, nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. Um, let's just catch up on any questions. Um, we can have a chat in between as well. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to have to try this one with the yuzu gin I have lying around at home, says Caleb. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. The thing with cocktails that I love doing at home is that if you've got some, I've got some weird, like I know what I've got in whiskey. Like I know what I've got in whiskey and I know what whiskey cocktails I can make and all that kind of stuff. And you hear, you get to listen to me talk about whiskey all the time. But for me to talk about a, a gin in this case or a society gin or whatever it is, is something a bit different and something and that is obviously led by flavor. When experimenting with cocktails at home, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll ask Sam about this, but it's all about uh, it's all about focusing on flavor as we do at the society anyway. Focus on what what you enjoy in the flavor of those of those the, some of the components coming together, if you like. Yeah, I agree. I think whiskey is almost whiskey is something I like to appreciate and sort of be really nerdy about. Cocktails, I just have a bit of fun because it's that more experimental. Mm. And as you, like we've got weird bottles at home that you sort of find and think, yeah, what can you make with this. 
<laughs> I, uh, I, yeah. I was uh, actually, I um, was given a bottle as a gift um, many years ago of a, um, it's a German Saar gin. Ooh. So it's actually, it's made out of uh, quince. It's, oh. it's a quince gin, essentially. It's a German Saar quince. That's and, really interesting, yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's a fascinating gin on it by itself. It's like cloudy in color, cloudy, like cloudy apple kind of color into it. That's awesome, yeah. Yeah, and it's like it works in really interesting combinations. And I, I find it's terrible in Negroni. It doesn't work in Negroni at all. I've tried. Yes. But it works in other things, and it, it works great even as like a sour and tonic. Yeah. Sorry, even better, sour and soda, I should say. Like a, a sour and soda sort of setup. Yeah, gin and soda, it's really quite underrated. Because yeah. it's, sort of, it's like adding whiskey to water. You're opening up the gin, getting all those different botanicals coming through, how they react with water. Adding water to whiskey. Yes, adding water to whiskey, yes. Don't worry, I sometimes add whiskey to my water as well. It's fine. <laughs> the fireball should be. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, this is the exciting part about it. It's like finding flavors and what works. And I agree with you on the, on the soda side of things as well. Because yes. This, I, I, was, I was having a chat with Susie about, uh, with, about this the other night. Um, after my live stream, we spoke the next day and she said, because uh, I, did, I did this plus tonic. Yes. She said, oh, you should try it maybe with soda. And I was like, yeah, I know I should. And I didn't really think about that on the night um, because it's true though. Tonic is lovely, but soda, uh, ex- you can, it doesn't hide any of the flavor. Exactly, yeah. And it depends on what, to- there's so many different tonics these days as well. Like Fever Tree has at least six in their range. You've got Strange Love, you've got Cappy, then you've got all the international brands. And that's then, that's a whole new world of what tonic to match with your gin, where soda will pretty much work with most gins. Mm. So I'm not a big fan of those really, um, there's, there's a bunch of tonics out there which are overly botanical tonics, mm. like Fentimans. Uh, yeah. I, I love Fentimans as a standalone tonic, but I, I can't taste any gin with it. No, and sometimes, yeah, you want your gin to still shine through in a gin mm. tonic. Yeah, it would make for a great, great cocktail builder, no, yes. no doubt. Yes. Yeah. Um, in terms of just a straight GNT, uh, it's best not to overcomplicate things. No, I think keep it simple. Yep. I yeah, ice gin tonic, however much tonic you want. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike Maruzzi says he's serving up a couple of Riviera fizzes here. Ooh, yeah. Cool. And um, yeah. Quince gin sounds lovely. It does, Rob. Uh, it's it's great stuff, Rob. It was just sort of it's a bit of curio, and you find these weird gins around the world. Just even like Tassie gins, there's some interesting Tassie gins, there's some interesting uh, gins from around Australia, around the world. Uh, and, you know, it's um, and it's even, if I'm being on brand, there's interesting gin coming out of Hoik, which yeah. I'd never think it would because I don't know anything about Hoik. I know it's near the borders. I know it's the uh, in the Scottish borders. I know it's um, it is, it's just an interesting gin and that is flavor-led that was, is the discussion we're about. Mm. And Matt Will is saying that he's... Uh, his gin martini ended up being a white Russian. Look, it happens to the best of us. Um, uh, I, my condolences. Um, white Russians are a lovely drink. I forgot all about them. Yeah. And then I watched The Big Lebowski and I was like, yeah. <laughs> white Russians are, uh, uh, I'd say, even more dangerous than that gimlet. Yes. They yeah. are. They're just milkshakes. They're just milkshakes. They're just like, oh, I'm a kid again. I can drink five uh-huh. of these. I made one using a honey vodka, uh, salted caramel Kahlua. And oat milk and it was just dangerous because it was just nutty and creamy and i was like this is just i, I can't drink more than one or else yep. I'll be done. like you yep. just keep drinking them yeah hmm. um <laughs> uh uh so joey says that uh i loved the um the starwood gins when they were making them joey you know what that's a really interesting comment because i don't think that they were actually you know what oh i don't want to get my facts wrong here I'm pretty sure. Well, they they were Starwood gins, and they, but um, it was. I think they were mostly produced by Four Pillars for Starwood, um, at the t- during that during that era. Not to say that they weren't Starwood gins. I don't know what Starwood's involvement in the production process was. It may have been they rectified Four Pillars input or something. I don't know what it was, but um, they were lovely. But I'll be honest, I'm kind of kind of glad they don't do them anymore. But it wasn't their strong suit. And they even they admitted that they it's a whiskey distillery. And they were trying to make gin. It's like, and there are many distilleries out there that successfully make gin and successfully make whiskey, market and to produce both. But some just do some things better than others. And this is an example where they they learned what their strengths and weaknesses were there. Um, And Louis Duckett. Thanks, Louis. Uh, Who is this Matt Bailey guy uh, everyone keeps talking about? Uh, He doesn't do laybacks on live stream, live on stream. Uh, (laughs) Well, I mean, you may have heard that, Louis, but we're not at the end of the stream yet. And um, 
I, I'll have to decide there and then uh, what my personal reputation is, is worth. Thanks so much for the comment, Louis. Always appreciate it. And um, uh, I am a barrel aged Negroni in Louis's Coca Cola barrels. Did you hear that, Louis? That's right, barrel aged Negroni in <laughs> an ex Coca Cola TIB Louis Ducket something barrel. You know what? Get 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 Senior H to look after it for you. Don't worry, mate. Don't worry. Get get Senior H to look after it. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Oh, the Negroni's. Are, you know what? I, I almost have it if I'm going out for a nice dinner, and it, it's a it's a properly nice restaurant with a good bar. Yes. And that's what you start with. That's what I love starting with. It just it's the palate neutralizer. It sparks you up. You gets you ready for a dinner. It, it, mm. it increases your appetite. I'd almost go so far to say. And there's so much variation. Like you can start adding some bitters in there. I remember I went to a, like a G, uh, it was a Negroni degustation. So each course had a different Negroni. You know, cho- chocolate Negronis, raspberry Negronis. Yeah. There's no scope. And yeah, so I think this is just a nice simple one, but I think they're a great drink. No, uh, yeah. I'm a, I'm a bit fun. It's okay. Tim Tams, right? Yes. See what I'm going with this? There's I only one Tim Tam, right? Well, if you ask Willa, he, he reckons Tim Tam originals are the best. I'm one of the people that thinks the double coat is all the dark are very good. I like the salted caramel, but that's because it's got a sweet tooth. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. Yes. So, <laughs> um, but no, no, just joking. But like, this is the thing though. It's kind of like, it's, um, it's, there's so much like, you see all these variations on Negroni, like you say, raspberry Negroni, chocolate Negroni. It's yet, if you can find a bar that just does one really good Negroni, mm. bam. Like I don't need... Um, yeah, much more than that. Actually, if I'm if I'm uh, if I want to go back in time a little bit here, it's like 2015. Uh, there was a bar in Melbourne called the Beaufort. I think that's before I was. Le- oh no, I was just legal then to drink. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and after 10 p.m. Uh, or maybe after 12, after midnight, they used to do um, uh, Negroni knockoffs for Hospo, yeah. and it was like six dollar Negronis oh, until wow. close. And so it was just it was just a giant vat of Negroni then pour into a glass and put an ice cube in but geez they were, they were good times um, yeah. Matt sad to say but salted caramel Tim Tams win uh, Louis Louis maybe we're going to incorporate it uh, we have to incorporate this into our next society tasting in Hobart uh, once all the events are all kicking back off again because um, we're going to do a Tim Tam and society single cast pairing and you might be wrong that's okay don't start with Mrs. Willow like Willow mate we're not going to ever agree on this Dark Tim Tams are the best. The dark chocolate ones are the best. Sorry. Uh, I, know, I, I don't have a huge sweet tooth, so I like the dark ones. They're higher cocoa. They're not as sweet. I get it. Uh, original for sure. The double coat is a bit much. Caleb, I had this discussion with... Sally even gave me Tim Tams once because of, because of this. This is, this is one of those these everlasting uh, arguments that I'm, I'm always ready for. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll eat any Tim Tam. I'm not really fussy. Yeah, well, I mean, Tim Tams are Tim Tams. They're good regardless, but... Exactly. Yeah. Tim Tam espresso martinis actually work quite well too. They do. They do. If you can tolerate espresso martinis, not really my not really my cup of tea. That's my go-to cocktail, I think. No kidding. Yeah, I think... Oh, I'm not... T- I don't even know what... I love coffee. I like... I'm not actually the biggest fan of vodka. I prefer like a rum espresso martini to give it a bit of extra body or like a nice aged tequila as well. Yeah, right. So... But I'm not too fast. I, I just like drinking them. Uh, Miranda <laughs> says, hell no, double coat all day. I know. Get it here first. Double coat. <laughs> I, I'm double I'm double coat or, or dark. That's that's all there is to it. Mm. Um, you can drink through the Tim Tam. Caleb, I've, yeah, you can. I mean, you ha- ah, it's easy for a cup of tea to drink through a Tim Tam because, or a cup of coffee because it's it just it's hot and it melts it straight through. But drinking it, do you drink the espresso martinis through the Tim Tam? It could work. I haven't tried it, but I might. <laughs> Matt Willis says KFC crumbed Tim Tams. Yes, KFC. <laughs> Fried chicken for life. Yes. Double dark coat. Or maybe they should do a triple coat. Just the, the densest, like a black hole version of the Tim Tam. Yeah. Triple coat. Now we're getting somewhere. I know. That's, that's a whole other stream almost, just Tim Tam pairings. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it could happen. It could happen as, as part of it. Um, just for those who <laughs> just for those who have just joined in, and there's certain things I shouldn't promote on this stream, but that's a pretty funny comment, Matt. Well done. Um, there's uh, <laughs> um, 
Sam Licardi from McHenry's Distillery um, and I have been making gin cocktails tonight because uh, it's Friday night and we've both got bottles of gin open and we've both got all the other ingredients kicking around our offices. So we thought, why not share it with you, show you how to make them. We started with the gimlet. If you missed any of this, you can always come back and watch these later. It's a, You know what? I love gimlets. I love them. It's- right. I think they're super refreshing. It's almost in like that mojito and like daiquiri category where you can just sit in the beach, like over crushed ice. This would be perfect. So sort of like, I don't like mojitos. Ah, see, I, I think, see, I like that sweet, minty, refreshing drinks. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's funny because I love mint and yeah. I love it used in like a lamb roast or something like that. I just mm. love it, but I don't like it in the cocktail. I don't know. Something that for me is just, you know, yeah. Maybe replace it with coriander and I'll be fine. That should work, yeah. <laughs> Get a bit more <laughs> and then we've just made a classic Negroni. It, it, you know what? Anyone can make a Negroni. You saw we even built it in glass. You yeah. don't need a shaker. You don't need a strainer. You don't need anything complicated. You could go the full Sam Licardi and get a, a sphere of ice, which would be the preferable way from what I did, which was lots of ice. But I didn't have a sphere, but I just it's worked with it. I do have ice spheres in the freezer, but I wasn't that organized. Um, uh, <laughs> that's the block of chocolate. That's That's true. That's true. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to just check if there's any comments coming in the other stream that I've missed out on here. No, all good. Tim, good to see you. Stu Mountjoy, um, everyone joining in. Pete Visky, good to see you. Um, you're tuned into the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society live with SMWS stream, which is every single night. And tonight we're just doing a bit of um, gin cocktails at seven o'clock before you can get on with your Friday night and have dinner after this. This is a great sort of pre dinner drink if you want to make yourself a Negroni. You literally need a bottle of gin, a bottle of Campari, and a bottle of vermouth. Yeah. When it comes to vermouth, as Sam was saying, there's so many options out there. I've got a, vermouth, I've got a vermouth negro, which is my all-time favourite, but I've also got a bottle of Dolan Rouge, which I didn't know I had until five minutes before the stream. Yeah, I'm just using Maiden Night Classic, so it's a nice intermediate sort of between a dry and a sweet vermouth, locally made. But I like Lillet as well. Like yeah. it's something a little bit different. It's not technically vermouth, but it falls into that aromatized wine category. Yep. And it makes it if you want to make a, a Vespa Martini, that's what it calls for. Well, Lillet Blanc and yeah, or Kinder Lillet was the original, but Lillet is the closest you can get, sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do love a bit of Lillet. And it's, it's a very versatile uh, as well. Yeah, it's great. Uh, you, can, you can drink it on its own too. It's lovely. You put it in the fridge. Mine's oxidized a bit now, but it's still just as good, to be honest. Yeah, how, much, how long does vermouth last? I've been told not a lot of time. So I keep this one in the fridge because that's my standard, just so it keeps it a little bit fresher. I think this is where we need to ask our bartender friends about what the exact is. Yeah, it's like a couple of weeks to a month because you yeah. want to keep the freshness. Once it's opened, it loses what it is. Just a reminder that neither of us are bartenders, neither of us have worked with bartenders, neither of us uh, know anything about bartending. But that's uh, the, the the mysteries of the world of how we end up being ambassadors for the spirit. We know a lot of bartenders, though. We know a lot of bartenders. That's true. <laughs> so that's that's true and very helpful. Um, uh, Rob Aker says, uh, "I wish Vermouth came in a smaller bottle. I never get through it enough before it goes off." Rob, I'm going to tell you something. I've had this Vermouth Negro in my fridge now for months and months and months. Um, I'm going to go so far to say almost a year, and it still smells and, and is working just fine. It's I think if you keep it in the fridge and it's got a fairly high fill level on it, so it's actually it's okay. Um, then you'll be okay. Um, but yeah, if, if it's you know if it doesn't oxidize, you keep it refrigerated. Just yeah. smell it. If it smells like it's starting to get uh, vinegary or uh, tannic, then I'd probably just I'd probably tip it or isobuteric or iso. Uh, uh, anyway, yes. I know Maiden and I do 375 mil bottles, so you can get those, the half size. Because yeah, I, I do, like I've had I bought this at the start of ISO, of ISO, and I'm nearly finished it now. So, and that's been doing live streams every week. But yeah, they are quite hard to get through, so you can always get the smaller ones. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, I reckon, yeah. Uh, Jerry asks your thoughts on the Four Pillars Bloody Shiraz Gin. Jerry, yeah. it's it's a powerhouse product. Yeah, like it's it's a no brainer. It's 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 and it's lovely just in a glass of ice. It's, yeah. it's, or, or, I mean, I don't, I don't think I've ever had it neat, but just even just literally a, a slice of orange, the gin, ice, done. It's lovely. A bit of lemon tonic. I treat it like, I use it like the slow gin. So a bit of lemon tonic. Yeah. Works really well if you want to spice it up like that. But really good. Their new bottle design's awesome as well. So, yeah. We'll have to get another one this year, you know, complete the collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The usual. Like- yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Shall we? I think so, yeah. Let's do it. Put these two cocktails aside and we need our third one. Now, what do we need here? Do we, we need the shake. We need this again, don't we? I'm just going to... I've been chilling my glass. So I'm just going to... 
drain that out. Do you think you're organised or something? What's going on here? Yeah, just a martini. These are this is honestly the cocktail I've stressed the most about doing these live streams because martinis people like them in so many different ways. So yep. it depends on what you like. Do you want a bit more crisp? Do you want it dirty? Do you want it dry? Do you want a bit more sweet? It's it's so much to it. I'm gonna try and follow along. So you go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so I'm sort of gonna make how I like to drink it. Okay. So that's sort of 20 mil of vermouth and then 60 mil of gin. You putting in a shaker? Uh, I'm just gonna stir it. Okay. Use the uh, the traditional method. Yes. Okay. Sh uh, stirred, not shaken. Yes, but a Vespa martini should be shaken. Oh, I'll, make, I'll make it Vespa style, see how it turns out. Okay. And actually, I learned this trick today. Uh, Emma from Whiskey and Almond said, stir your vermouth first to sort of chill that down a little bit. So that's what I'm going to, I'm going to try this for the first time. Okay. And how much vermouth did you use? I used 20 mil. Okay. And I think it's the colder the martini, the better the martini. So you dilute it down a little bit really chill it ideally you'd want to chill your glass in the freezer chill your, your um stir up yep. just get as cold as you want and then yeah i've been chilling my coupe glass as well okay. and then yeah, 60 mil of, of gin i'm gonna add in okay. i'm gonna use our classic dry yep. it's gonna look really well there's cardamom star anise uh, coriander seed flavors as well Sixty of gin, okay. So yeah, very dangerous cocktails, the martinis. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, not my preferred drink. I'm more of a team gin tea man, but I appreciate what they are. And when when you get a gin palace, I just let them make whatever they want to make on the day, and that's what I drink. And yeah, just shake it. So you've got vermouth and you've got gin, and that's it. That's it. You can add some orange bitters if you like, but I like to keep it nice and simple. And then, yeah, you just shake it till your stir is super cold. Matt Willis says he likes them shaken because he is a bit of a James Bond uh, kind of guy. I get it. I get it. Uh, a bit of burnt lemon thyme with a splash of olive juice. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, if you want some olive juice in there, you make a Gibson yeah. as well, put some uh, pickled onions. And then, yeah, you just strain that into your, your glass. Please excuse my glassware again. I'm not much of a, a bartender, as you know. That's all right. So yeah, that's mine's not going to be clear because of the kind of vermouth that I've used, but that's all right. And I just like a little bit of a lemon twist. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of garnishes, it does make it look really pretty. Give that a squeeze, get the oils. I'll do the same. And then, yeah, nice and simple. Sancho. Yes, salute. Yeah. Yeah. That is it. Super cold. That's where I think that's where they shine through. And yeah, happy World Martini Day. Happy World Martini Day to you all. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, this has been great getting some questions and comments through, which is always uh, appreciated. Kelvin Lau, I don't know if you're still watching, but good to see you, mate. Hope you're well. Hope you're well, Kelvin. Um, and good to see everyone asking these questions. I mean, Matt Willis commented before, which I think I can get away with saying now, coffee, cocaine, and vodka. The ultimate wake you up martini. <laughs> coffee, cocaine, and vodka. I mean, that's, I mean, sure. I mean, you know what? You do you. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah the, the, the variation, uh, this, was, this is kind of the, the subject of tonight was about the, the variation of flavors that one can get out of just mix and matching different ingredients. And there's no one set that, I mean, that's one of the questions that you see in cocktail world, uh, especially from aspiring um, bartenders and aspiring beginners in the category, they ask, well, which are the best ingredients, the best uh, Negroni, the best martini, whatever it is. And the answer is whatever you like. And exactly. it's, yeah. I and think, it, yeah. Yeah. I think it's whatever you like. That's, I think, I think sometimes we can overcomplicate it and try. What's the best whiskey in the world? It's like, there's no such thing as the best whiskey yeah. in the world. It's whatever you like. Whatever you like. And that's and that's kind of the, the rule of thumb with it all and in understanding that and Exactly, yeah. Yeah. I'm not the biggest fan of martinis, but I'm actually I'm surprised myself there. That's quite nice. I think the, of my three cocktails tonight, I think the winner has to be the um for me the, the gimlet, the first gimlet, one. Yeah, I'd I'd go gimlet, spin on the grainy, and then the martini. Yeah, same here. 
Yeah, the gimlets are great. Like, oh. even if you, you could make a double of that and just sip on it like in a rocks glass, big chunk of ice in there. Yeah, it's, it's super wow. cool. Lovely. That's a proper, um, proper summer. It's a summer cocktail. It is a summer cocktail. I think, yeah. I think we're in summer now, but we're not. It's okay. It's freezing cold in Melbourne. So it's not, it's not much warmer in Sydney. Only, yeah. only a tad as always. In Port Arthur, it's very cold this week. So it's been miserable. So. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to coming uh, back to Tassie soon, as I've been saying, and I'm looking forward to uh, visiting McHenry again and, and seeing it all and, and seeing Bill. Yeah, it's all changed down there now. The brewery's up and just about up and running, so we've done a lot of building over this isolation period. So two new Bond stores, so they're nice and full now. The brewery's been built. We've got accommodation on site as well. So very it's cool. turning into a nice little destination place. I'm pretty excited to go back down there and see how everything's going. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm hoping that the um we can get uh get that um the what do you call it the the Tassie Whiskey Awards up again for yeah that's going to be very exciting so hopefully we can get that and yeah get that Tassie blended whiskey as well so and yeah. I'm hoping that we can dump a few liters of Negroni at least into um into Louis Coca Cola barrel because I'm I'm yes uh, deeply proud of you Louis and when I say proud <laughs> I think yeah I think Louis is one of our um good friends with one of our um, staff Elise so I think. She sort of sourced me some of that Coca Cola, so I'm pretty excited to try that. And we'll get strange projects going on, do a little bit of a Salamanca something. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it going. We'll do something with it. Why not? Why not? Exactly. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being a part of the stream tonight. Um, always yeah. appreciate it. And um, we'll see you all again next week, of course, uh, on the Scotchmont Whiskey Society stream, where we go like to go every night. Sam, when's your when's your next stream? Uh, we're having Sunday off. I'm going to have a day off this week, but we'll be back next Sunday for our last official isolation one. So we'll be doing cool. fan favourites. It's going to get nice and exciting. And I don't know what we're going to make yet. We're going to throw it open. So if you've got any weird cocktails, send them to me and I'll make them. You know what? I'll come and invade your stream and, and throw some ideas at you live. I'll do it. Like it, it can't be as bad as when we got pulled down for playing Star Wars music and Disney took us down. So that's pretty fun. <laughs> that's going to happen. <laughs> I know. So. But no, definitely come and heckle away. It's always good fun. That's even harder, harsher than Jedi juice. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, it's yeah. hilarious. Like, to be fair, I played the Cantina music three times. So maybe that's why. <laughs> kind of deserved it. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. But no, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure coming on and really exciting. Uh, thanks from Joey. Uh, thanks from Rob. Good to see you guys. Thanks so much for tuning thanks. in, guys. We really appreciate um, you being here whilst we made a mess and um, and tasted some cocktails. Slanjava. Slanjava. Thank you.